Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I, my name is Feno. I am Malagasy. I am coming from Madagascar and working with an NGO, AVSF, who was in charge to implement Campus Madagascar. I was a, a coordinator of this project. A short information for you. After five, before Campus, no knowledge, no technology, no um, conscience of um, micro irrigation system in Madagascar. But after Scampis, after three years, we have no um, materials adapted to the local context. And um, this short period, uh, with, uh, and the supply chain with three small manufacturers and more 15, 50 retailers of materials. And uh, this short period, allowed to 7,000 small farmers to use these materials with uh, good results. And uh, I, I tried to calculate, to show you, because with uh, 7,000, we can save 4,000, 400,000 cubic, cubic, cubic meters of water. And uh, no, uh, the, this short period showed the a growing interest for private and public act, uh, stakeholders to insert a microaggression system in the food security, in improvement of income, and in the natural resource management. And uh, uh, today, I, I am very happy to share you a story for a woman, a special woman, who is linked in the, our story? It's the story of uh, it's a story of uh, Sister Antonietta, who is a member of uh, one uh, co uh, religious community. We know him uh, in uh, 2009 in installing uh, one drip irrigation at this community. Uh, she uh, because she was the first responsible of the set of demonstration. And uh, she also is one of the 18 animators of uh, one farmer's association, Tinzwein. It's, it's farmers, this farmer's association have um, uh, an objective, which is to out poor and vulnerable far small farmers from a uh, vicious circle of debt. Uh, Why? Because in this region, due to many problems, as a lack of source water, the poor source fertility, and the lower access to land, and the lower access to good market, almost, I think, 70% of uh, small farmers are very poor. And their strategies to remedy this situation are less effective, like Sharkopin, Labo, Agricultural Labo, and uh, early sale of crop, and uh, microfinance credit or loan money lenders. And uh, indeed, without, with uh, the political crisis, this situation was being important because in Madagascar, Scampis Madagascar, Scampix Madagascar was born with a politi political crisis and growth with a poli political crisis until now it is not yet resolved. And uh, then when uh, Sister Antonietta now she uh, have seen the result of this demonstration, she was convinced that this innovation can help the small farmers to uh, of their problems. And he decided to promote the, this innovation into the member of this association. And uh, when uh, he started uh, this action, he, she has uh, already several difficulties. First, the small farmers didn't have uh, money to, to buy the materials. Second, uh, uh, most of them refused to, to take the materials because, uh, due to the risk of uh, steel of the material in the field. And uh, uh, third, uh, the donor of this situation has decided to stop its funding for the support of animation 
en fait des motions pour la visualisation et pour le management de la solidarité. Parce que la main stratégie de la visualisation est d'améliorer la production de projets et de développer des fonds de la solidarité pour augmenter step to step the production and the in, uh, income of the small farmers. When, uh, uh, but uh, Sister Antonietta negotiated with Scampis a better price for materials in order to permit our small farmers to buy. And we agreed, agreed and uh, so um, 45 small farmers has decided to buy the materials for two euro for uh, 50 square meter two euro and then uh, after all the farmers could be paid the materials and uh, after that we can show that uh, one farmers can save 11 cubic meter water with uh, the materials and uh, after in this and uh, this uh, with this progress the association decides to increase the number of users and uh, Sister Antonietta was, uh, has negotiated with us how to, with a, a, a dealer of vegetables, to search uh, someone to buy the product of uh, small farmers and she was negotiated with the nearest resellers of materials if, uh, in order to have a facility of payment of materials so thus they have uh, more 200 of small peasants who decide to buy materials but after uh, the production was very very good but there, uh, there was a problem because the dealers didn't buy the products of small farmers and um, and um, they uh, were obliged to to sell the products at the local, ma local market with a bad uh, prices, a lower prices. And uh, the uh, sm uh, farmers said to sisters, you are the first responsible of our problem because you convinced us to, to buy the materials and to put us in relation with this dealer. And the sister has not abandoned. He sold over client to in order to uh, to promote the commercialization the marketing of the small farmers and this year he saw he found someone an NGO who is agreeing to buy the uh, product with a contract with small farmers but uh, uh, after in uh, uh, 2009 and nine when I asked uh, sister, do you uh, uh, want to use a travel pump? She said to me, why you ask this question? Because in, in this region, we have already a lack of uh, water. And if you, if I uh, convince small farmers to use a pump, I incite them to waste water. And it is uh, do you know that water is our life? And uh, it's why, if we, uh, have it with uh, the materials, we just, do you see? Island run, it means water is life. Uh, because, and uh, when you, uh, we, we, and we, uh, made with materials, we, we called her, do you, what you want to put in the this material? And she said, Ayn and Ram, water is life. It's the key message, the first lesson for these sisters, who is very important for us. And Marloran, that means multi water source in Malagasy, multi water source. And uh, for uh, sister, if we must wrote anything at the materials, Ayn, Ayn and Ram, water is life. Because the, uh, sometimes there is a mistake for almost of population of uh, uh, of actors of stakeholders when we talk 
about uh, micro irrigation system. We talk only income all time, but we talk not sufficiently the water. It is very so important lesson that we take with the sister. And uh, this year, she would be uh, she would be uh, transferred by another regions. But she said, I have to continue. I have to continue with the small farmers, the poor small farmers. And uh, he negotiated, he negotiated with uh, his superiors in order to rest to postpone it. His assignment and uh, the, uh, their superiors agreed to five uh, two weeks ago. Weeks ago, I said uh, I met him, and uh, she said to me, Mr. Fen, you if you have to decide to stop your project, over like over of projects, I have decided to continue my story with the small farmers, and this is the two. The second lesson that I have, um, I take with the uh, sister. What is the key message for the story? I think that uh, small farmers don't want water, but they can the uh, uh, key actors in order to who permit us to save water because of Madagascar. Eighty percent of um, uh, Malagasy are. A rural farmers, and uh, but uh, in order to help them to save water to improve their income, they need you need uh, um, a complementary and gradual support, technical, psychological indeed, and um, means support, marketing support, indeed a political support that it is missing in the all the country developing. That's uh, the uh, principal, the first uh, main lesson that we take. And uh, uh, to close my presentation, uh, uh, it is hard for me to speak in, in front of you in English, but I try to do it for Sister Antonetta because I think that uh, speaking English in front of you is less difficult than the work of the sister. And uh, it's, it's a great pleasure for, for me to, to share you this uh, history. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sure Sister Antonietta will be very proud of you. <laughs> Lova. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning to. I am uh, Louvarandiambelu. I am from the capital city of Madagascar. Today I want to tell you my story. This is a story of four lifelong friends, neighbors since childhood. We were educated together. At the graduation, Looking for improbable jobs, we decided to turn to agriculture. We asked for land nearby, nearby and start with a three hectare lot in Ivat, in Antananarivo suburb. We felt full turned to the planting of tomatoes, hoping to get favorable results. My friends and me, we started as farmers. We encountered water and irrigation problems for our crops, the micro irrigation kits from India that we tried to use didn't work for us. We adapted them to our needs and it worked. After 2009, we started our small business to manufacture and sell our kits to Malagasy peasants and farmers. We are successful among farmers in our country. Our kids improved their farming. To expand our business, we are looking for partnerships and new market in Madagascar and abroad. Therefore, 
Our main occupation was to obtain information on planting and producing tomatoes per hectare. Fertilizers we are we used and the crops were monitored. The plot was on a slope, the plant should be watered every day. The upside was jobs created in the small town. Indeed, watering required a local workforce as it should be done twice a day. Then we began looking for a solution to a critical issue that was watering. After, after a brainstorming group, the idea was born to use the drip drip form materials at low cost on seat. It was the most that the small company needs. The people dreamed then at harvest time to be profitable. But that year, a killer disease devastated the tomato plants in all of the capital and the surroundings. It was then what we learned of existence of scampis and its demonstration in the locality. Out of curiosity, we came to attend the demonstrations. We are very interested. <laughs> then comes the time of discussion and partnership with Scampis, which proved very success successful. After the tomato ground, we became kit manufacturers and started in Ovagri. For that their manufacture, we corrected and I have made change to the kits. We opened local unity for our material assembly in Antirabe. We now have uh, five permanent staff and uh, 15 seasonal workers. Farmers benefit from their kits. We are less dependent on the rain. We are less vulnerable to climate change and drought. We have stopped uh, using water well for our crops. We can use water more efficiently and kit cost is affordable for them. We aspire to expand our current activities and outlets. We are recurring water problems. At the same time, being a, pe being a pioneer of micro-irrigation, Innovagri hopes to obtain state or other sources subsidies, knowing that the water problem in Madagascar could be partly resolved with our system. Novagri prepares to face alone in the future challenge of establishing the implementation of the extension of our micro irrigation system throughout the island. Challenge may be encountered because the Scampis project has finished. Some customers are, more, are not willing to pay their purchases. Having worked closely with Scampis, Novagri we need to be autonomous. There are nevertheless some positive points as opportunities for all to make sales more interesting. We accept to develop new partnership following this World Water Week event. We are open to share the experience. Thank you for your attention. Okay, we're going to finish the Madagascar group with Christian or Christian. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am, uh, uh, my name is Christian Amason. Uh, I'm engineer, agronomist, specialist in rural development and uh, monitoring and evaluation. Uh, I'm come from Madagascar. Uh, before I was supporting Scampis project in the implementation. Now I am working in a, a FAD project who uh, supports land tenure and production, uh, production. Usually I speak French, but now uh, I try to share you my history uh, 
uh, in English. So today I have a great pleasure to share you uh, a story about farmers uh, in the south of Madagascar, in the south town of Madagascar, and the microrigation system scaling up <coughs> with a national project. It happened in 2010 and 2011. Mm -hmm. To start the story, I like to share you a video, a short video. In it, you uh, uh, you will show how is happiness and enjoy of farmers in the south zone of Madagascar watching water for agricultural and how water is crucial for their lives. <laughs> Water is life, it is to the slogan of uh, micro irrigation system scaling up in Madagascar. So the strategies for focus on two main uh, aspects. First is the implementation by a local promoter. It is uh, an NGO. Uh, second, relying on uh, material distribution chain. For the implementation, NGO IVSF build the capacity of promoters and key actors, ensure relationship with manufacturer and the national project to uh, for the acquisition of equipment and the establishment of distribution distribution chains. And the VSF act as a companist for local promoter and manufacturer in the implementation of activities. In the area, rural people are poor and affected by chronic hunger because of drought, while uh, their main activity is agriculture. And they're having major uh, constraints compared to the availability of uh, water resources caused by uh, rainfall, low rainfall, drying up early of water sources and uh, drying of rivers. From the first demonstration of uh, micro irrigation systems, people are very keen uh, to use the material and adopt irrigation systems. Uh, they are motivated by seeing the arrival of water in their agricultural, agricultural plots. And they are also very placed to able to produce food from lighter water resorts that exist during the dry season. People using micro irrigation system were able to produce vegetable, improve nutrition, and food security in their families. Add more. Micro irrigation systems help secure uh, seed production in order to reload uh, the culture after drought, during which pro crops and production are destroyed and seeds are uh, no longer available. But these people um, have problems. Uh, in relation to the uh, adoption of technology. First, micro irrigation system is a new practice in the area and technical capacity of farmers are uh, still very limited. Then, the materials are not yet available, available locally, lack of distribution network, and finally, on the main problem of farmers is their low financial capacity. 
to purchase materials. From these facts, uh, facts, technicians and farmers are trained in the microrganism system control, and materials are supplied and subsidized by a national project funded by uh, IFAD. The name of the project is Arupan. And more, the lack of water resources the major obstacle to the ad adoption of microorganism system in the area. Otherwise, the microorganism system is alternative to improve the res resilience of farmers thanks to the effect of climate change and water scarcity. Microorganism is also a means that can help pe people to increase food production and improve food security through the effective management of uh, water resources. Water is uh, crucial to the survival of uh, farmers in the southern Madagascar. So improvement, improving management and water availability should be a sustained, sustained effort to educate hunger and improve the lives of farmers. Now, the main challenges are formed by increasing number of uh, farmers, integrating microorganism systems in their production system to improve water management, coping fast uh, with climate change, coping with uh, climate change, improve food security, and income household. But contrasts are also to overcome for sustainable adoption of microrganism system. There are the low capacity of farmers, access to technology, and the low water availability. Moreover, the enthusiasm of farmers to technology, the government interest, and other uh, stakeholders constitute and opportunities for scaling up and adoption of microrganism system in the area, which is maturized by the agreement of Aruba project to continue the promotion for three more years. And last, scaling up is now possible in Madagascar thanks to the achievement and the experiences of SCAMPIS. It is the end of my uh, story. I thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. And thank you for making a special effort to deliver it in English. We very much appreciate it. Um, questions, comments? Yes. Thank you. My name is Ruth from Water Services Trust Fund in Kenya. As a fund, we exist to mobilize and channel resources to uh, water supply and sanitation and water resource management. So the person looking for partners, we could probably exchange notes after this on that one. My question is, I'm listening to uh, about your project and your program, and I'm trying to hear some statistics. For example, how many farmers have you reached with this program? How many farmers are participating? How many lives would you say have been impacted by what it is that you're doing in Madagascar? Some statistics, statistics some numbers. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. Uh, okay. <rire> euh, si je euh, je n'arrive pas à bien répondre, je demande à Rodolphe de, d'interpréter un petit peu. Je peux parler français pour éviter de, que j'oublie quelque chose. Elle a demandé les statistiques. Oui, je sais, oui. Combien de combien uh, de Oui. Yes. No. Uh, after a few years, we have um, nine thousand farmers around, and uh, we, uh, in these nine uh, thousand farmers, 
There are um, 2,500 clients, the small farmers, the clients, who can buy the materials with the, the resellers, the 50 resellers, but the other is the other uh, small farmers who is supported by the other project like uh, Europa, like uh, FAO, for example, like the uh, um, small NGO who is intervening in the other um, our, uh, zone of intervention. Because we, in the, our strategy, we have um, many uh, three principal uh, actions. First, to develop the marketing, the marketing action of materials, and three, uh, two, to, um, to facilitate the access of um, small farmers of these materials in front of uh, partnership with other projects, with other, uh, like FAO, other, other institute, institution like uh, FAO, and uh, uh, with, uh, uh, indeed with the op economical operators who is uh, working in uh, agricultural, uh, contractual agricultural, who is uh, supplying uh, materials and input for small farmers and buy the materials after. This. Okay. Other questions, comments? Yeah? Okay. Um, now, there were, there were some questions that were asked, which I think uh, everyone probably can benefit from having another round of discussion. One of it was uh, um, the question that, that uh, uh, Yap asked, the rate of return. So we have about 20 minutes, and in this 20 minutes, what I would like everyone to do is to, I'm going to read out the, the, the salient points for me, very, very personal ones. Uh, things that perhaps all of us should be thinking about before we leave this room and come up with a commitment that each and every one of us will take to make sure that we are going to be applying these things or using these things in our uh, next round of projects and programs. One is how do we make sure that we do get a good rate of return? The other one is the, the rate of self-adaption and adoption of the technique. The other one is the question, the controversial question, which is still unanswered about the use of uh, this blue water. This is going to run out very soon. What are we going to do about it? And how are we going to make sure that this technology also is being used by the landless and how they can benefit uh, from it? The, the eternal issue of access to credit, which is uh, for us in, in rural development, it is, you know, we, we're faced with it day in, uh, day, uh, day out. Uh, and how are we going to be coping with climate change and how can these technologies actually help mitigate uh, that? How are we going to be developing partnership and how will we make sure that the smallholder farmers can enter into the market and get a good deal by selling their products in the local markets? These are some of the points that I picked up. So. Anyone wants to pick any one of them and come up with a concrete action that you are going to be taking or would you like, that you would like to suggest? And don't be shy, because there is a lot of knowledge in this room. Yes, sir. I think there's just building on the same question about credit. I think there's a lot that can be done to work with uh, banks and microfinance institutions and others to provide the right kind of credit that farmers need to be able to stimulate an expansion of, of uh, small scale irrigation. So I think you know one of them is to work with those institutions to determine what are the obstacles to providing credit and and then what can development organizations, the private sector, and others do to help. Uh, create the incentives to make you credit have an available. Where you have done this successfully, that we can share? No, we uh, we're actually starting. <laughs> we're, we're in October. We're starting uh, this work in Central America. We're um, working with the existing banks and microfinance institutions to create 
to, to create the, the packages that are needed. Okay. Is anybody in the room who can give some advice? Thank you very much. So I will give advice, but I would like to come back um, about water quality and uh, drip irrigation system because I think it's an ID products are low cost and this is very important to mention it. As when you arrive in a country and you speak about drip irrigation, clogging is the first issue. Always, ah, it doesn't work. Oh, something wrong. This project did not succeed. And you explain the story about Niger. I think the most important is adapting the product to the context. And I think that's something that, for example, ID with our tech center, we try to do. We really try to adapt to what is in the soil or what in peri-urban area about water quality, about clay. And for example, in Burkina, we have added second filters. And as Stapan was mentioning, the microtubes is something very important. It's simple, but for farmers, it just uh, blows, sucks, and you're going out. So this is something very important. And I would like to really insist about drip, is a very important technology and it's not too complex. On the opposite, it's how the supplier adapted to the local demand. So regarding microcredits, I mean, this is the biggest issue. And I think it's about subsidies also where you go if you want to create a local market for micro irrigation. This is a central question. Because or you go with subsidies or with NGOs and you can scale up, but you get some issue about sustainability. Microcredit in, for example, in West Africa is one of the biggest concerns. You get interest rate of 10% for six months. Microcredits sometimes are not adapted to agriculture. It's mainly for urban activity, for commercial urban more easy with easy, easier uh, return on investment. So what we are working at is for working with retailers and building trust. Because the retailers and the farmers, they know for 10, 15 years, and they know who is able to pay back and who is not able to pay back. And through a voucher system, we are working through this first. That's the first option. Second option is looking at rate on and return on investment. If you're sure about your product, you convince the bank. Our work is mainly with the bank and decreasing the interest rates, which are 10%, 12%, which is high and going lower, and demonstrating, listen, we have a market opportunity for 25,000 kids. Do you want to be the first to engage with us? Do you want to try to work with farmer on longer term? I think that's a job. We are, it's very complex. I will not say we have a solution, but we have already products. And we'll see, now we are at our sale. I mean, it's the rainy season and October. They are ready, those products. We'll tell you if it works or not. But I mean, this is uh, something very important for market development and sustainability. And, uh, sure, sure. And I think part of the access to credit is also the gender issue. So, uh, you know, that also should not be uh, underestimated. And my gender expert will be very proud. Okay. Can I ask Laurent or Rodolphe to translate? Ah, les gens aussi à côté de moi. Parce que nous, on a essayé déjà de travailler avec les institutions de microfinance. Et le problème, c'est que déjà, à Madagascar, c'est, à ma connaissance, les matériels de micro sont les seuls, les premiers à être mis en place en permanence dans les champs. Donc les, nous, on a eu des problèmes avec les institutions de microfinance micro qui, euh, qui ont eu peur de donner d'accorder des crédits aux paysans parce que c'est très risqué. Quoi. Et même les paysans, ils disent que c'est acheter des kits, c'est un investissement en risque. Parce que c'est pas seulement, il faut attendre quelques mois pour avoir les résultats, mais déjà aussi, il y a des risques de vol. Et c'est pour ça que moi j'ai dit que les, la problématique de l'eau n'est pas seulement une problématique des producteurs, c'est une problématique de tous les, les acteurs. Et nous, on a constaté même à Madagascar, avec les ministères de l'agriculture, on parle moins des problèmes d'eau. Seulement, cette année, on a pu travailler avec les ministères de l'eau, qui travaillent avec des... Euh, les ministères de la population, qui travaillent avec des gens très vulnérables, qui ont acheté des kits pour mettre en place des gens qui sont vraiment euh, pauvres. Et nous, on a constaté que, même, on a, on a constaté qu'il y a plus de prise de conscience chez les acteurs qui travaillent en dehors de l'agriculture que les, les, les acteurs agricoles même. <laughs> quite a few entangled issues in what uh, Fenner just said. Uh, 
Uh, I'll try to, to sum up. Uh, that they have tried in Madagascar to work with microcredit uh, institution and it proved uh, troublesome in many respects. Um, one of them being uh, the, the risk, uh, the risk being taken by the farmers adopting the technology um, is, is regarded as high by the, uh, by the banks or the microfinance institutions. Also because there is a, um, an uncommon, I would say in other contexts, uncommon uh, risk of theft, theft of the equipment in the field. That uh, this you don't find in, in, in many other uh, countries. It's very specific to Madagascar, so it's a, it's a big impediment. If I may add uh, something of, of my own regarding the microcredit, I take advantage. <laughs> I should not, but... I uh, of course, there's a role for microcredit to play, but after 30 years of efforts or even more, you, what you, the situation you find in quite a few countries is that microcredit reaches uh, at best 10% of the farmers. So it clearly is not a short-term solution. In Madagascar, again, just to take uh, that example, a recent uh, review of the microfinance issues, quite exhaustive, found out that about three quarters of the farmers will never, never resort to microcredit for one reason or another, be it a psychological, financial, just name it. They will not use that means. So it has a role to play for certain categories of, of farmers, usually the better off, but it is not the solution for the vast majority of them. Melinda Sundella from the Stockholm Environment Institute. Just to give you a pointer, there's a CETA finance project working in agricultural credit, micro, small scale, which has been very successful in Nicaragua under the Fonde Agro program and has also worked on this issue of moving microcredit to real, <laughs> excuse that word, but uh, not to, to a real type of agricultural package credit. And it's also been involved in promoting uh, drip irrigation. Yes. Okay, so let us faltering again. <laughs> um, I just you you said okay. How can we uh, uh, get this micro irrigation disseminated? I don't think this is the the, the issue. The objective is to have uh, better livelihoods and better nutrition and better income generation of those people. And uh, <laughs> what you see in all these projects, the trainings, all the things around it, this is actually what matters. And this is also what he said, it's not uh, the right technology for everybody. If, if people have no experience in growing tomatoes uh, with a watering can, then the micro-irrigation will not make it better. It's not like a golden bullet. Then it's like giving a Ferrari to somebody without a driver's license. So you need to give it to the right people that, that are reaching the ceiling of what they can do with their production system as it is now. And they will welcome micro-irrigation and they will adopt it. But people that have uh, not reached those limits, they are not interested by the technology. They can be much better helped by improved seeds, improved uh, cultivation practices, other things around it. So, yeah, this crusade for micro-irrigation, I still want to warn for it. It's just a, just a tool. <laughs> It may be a tool, but it's an opportunity you give people. And I don't think one should underestimate the, the opportunity. Everybody can learn. So um, I think there is a humility in all of us as development workers not to, pre, not to have preconceived ideas about the, the areas where we move into and just to make these blanket assumptions that, yes, in this country it will not work. So I think we all have to walk in with very much open-minded uh, attitude. Other questions? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, 
Um, in terms of one of the questions you raised, the partnership, um, I'm Liz Larson, I'm from Accenture. Um, we, in Accenture, we have a part of Accenture called a Accenture Development Partnerships, and part of that is um, bringing together our commercial clients and some of our clients that we work with in ADP to foster partnerships and do project management. So from that, um, we've done a project with Oxfam, scaling up their sustainable agriculture um, around the world in three different countries, and just bringing our expertise from our commercial side in how do we work with our commercial clients when they're trying to scale up a, pro a, a pilot project in whatever industry they're in and then trying to apply it and work with Oxfam to see how that works for them and how, what needs to change in that model. Um, so I think from uh, the consulting side, that's something we can bring is our uh, private sector experience. Thank you. Yes. Hi, um, my name is Lisa Bunclark. I'm from the Newcastle University in the UK. And I don't specifically have an answer, but it's more I'd really like to hear an answer to a pre... Um, sorry, I don't have a question. I'd really like to hear an answer to um, Tony Allen's question regarding the blue water. Because um, I do research on green water management, rainwater harvesting, and I'm specifically looking at Burkina Faso for my um, PhD study. And um, in some of the communities I've seen, um, lots of people say... They've tried growing um, garden vegetables and using irrigation schemes, but there's just not enough water in some of these communities. So perhaps some solutions on identifying which communities it might work in and it might not, and perhaps the limitations to how far micro-irrigation can help. You want to take that? Thank you. So this is the spirit of Tony um, Allen, who has um, graciously <coughs> left the room. Um, Rudolf Cleveringa again, from the f from bench to the back bench. Um, the the green or blue water debate is uh, is a very wide one, and um, as you um, seem to be rightfully indicating, there are areas where we should um, not encourage the, um, the the use of certain resources um, over others. Uh, it, it's certainly not a blanket approach to. Um, as, uh, as Waltering was saying, to go for a um, uh, micro-irrigation uh, crusade. Where it may work, that's where it may work, and of course not at the detriment of the interests of, uh, of third parties, and that includes the, uh, the environment. Now that's more easily said than done. If, if I am um, a smallholder um, a woman farmer somewhere in Burkina Faso and I, I see that opportunity, I really don't care whether someone upstream, downstream or sidestream is, is being affected by my um, uh, asset creation or my health or wealth creation. I mean, that's, that's not my job. My job as a farmer is to first think of my, my uh, livelihood and family. Now, the regulator come into place, yeah? and the regulators, in this case, would be ministerial forces or departments or, or municipalities. If they find that, um, indeed, in a particular area there is water that can be allocated through integrated water resource management planning and all these wonderful processes to a specific purpose, which in our case is poor smallholder um, livelihood support. Well, that is great, and then we need the policy dialogue to make sure that this happens. But there, if, there's, if there is no such water, or the use of such water comes at such extreme cost, social cost for instance, that it, uh, it's not a wide, wise choice to, to be made. Then I think the dialogue should also lead to the point, including the local stakeholders, that it's not just you know some wise men in Rome or something, but um, to have the, the, the local dialogue come to a, cons a consequential choice, saying, no, this is not the area where this kind of investment is most promising. We definitely need to diversify out of agriculture or into other um, uh, rain-fed options, or including, um, of course, um, small livestock development or, or other services. It's, it's certainly not the answer Tony was asking for, but there's, I don't think that there is, um, and maybe uh, uh, Francois, you can help me on this, I don't think that any of the major donors have, have done a global water balance on what their activities, um, uh, say, cause in terms of either uh, virtual water trade at, at global level or blue water or green water balances at, uh, at, at lower levels. And um, you may have given us some, some food for thought and it's always nice to have some um, you know, upcoming PhD that, that bothers the, uh, the establishment and says, hey, do your homework unless I want to do it for you. So thank you for suggesting that. 
Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I just want to add, like he mentioned almost, <laughs> it's using the appropriate technology for the area, uh, simply. And not just using the technology, but teaching the people to maintain the catchment area, even more important than the agriculture, is maintaining the catchment area. Yeah. Thank you. Other questions or comments? No? Okay. Now we're coming close to the end of the session. There is still, there is just one other thing I would like you to do. You all have in your wonderful bags that the organizers have given you a little notebook. Uh, so pull out that notebook and uh, tear out three pieces of paper from that notebook, please. Uh, on the first piece of paper, please write what is it that you learned today? On the second piece of paper, please write uh, one concrete action or commitment that you will do as a result of this session. And on the third piece of paper, please write down what is it that you liked most uh, about the session. And Cecilia will gather these from you as, uh, as you have them ready. The, the number one was what did you learn? Number two was one concrete action or commitment that you will make uh, as a result of this session. And the third one is what did you like most about the session? Actually, the, the ladies here will get them from you. Okay, so number one is what did you learn? Number two is a concrete action or commitment that you're going to, to make or to do. And number three is uh, uh, what is it that you liked most? Okay, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask uh, Rudolf to just say a couple of words, but before doing that, I wanted to thank all of you from a, from a personal note, uh, and also Rudolf and Cecilia for giving me this opportunity. I learned a lot today, and, and I really hope that you guys also enjoyed spending your Sunday morning uh, with us. Uh, um, and uh, I'm gonna pass it on to, the, to Rudolf, and thank you everyone. Okay, very briefly, 
Euh, merci beaucoup à tous euh, qui sont venus de, de très loin et qui ont représenté les intérêts de, de Sœur Antonette. Euh, merci à tous qui sont venus de, de tan lejos, de, de mis tierras de Guatemala, o sea, Tierra Chapin. Um, thanks to uh, all of you for having been here with us. I'm particularly thanking the, um, uh, the organizers of the, uh, this, this week for having facilitated um, the premises. Well, you can say that comes at a price. Yes, we paid the dear price. Um, but the, the bottom line is that I think we feel extremely encouraged by this um, inquisitive crowd and questions to take the agenda further in our um, institutions, Rome-based agencies, and I uh, dare to say even uh, with our um, international partners, uh, and continue to um, not crusade for micro-irrigation, but to keep on the, um, the fight for rural poverty reduction at a scale. 80 million people is what IFAD wants to take um, as a cut out of the uh, almost 1 billion rural poor by 2015. And I think with your enthusiasm and with your support, we're going to make it and we're going to even make more. So thank you very much for your support. And um, do grab any of us during the next week for bilateral, um, say, exchanges. If you want to point out issues like uh, from Niger or from Ghana or Burkina or from Nicaragua or wherever, the Kenya, the Trust Fund, please pick any of us and bother us yeah, and bug us because that's what we're here for. Thank you very much, and again, and uh, well, maybe there's a good time to go for coffee now, right? Okay. Here's a PR, a PR announcement. Where is our stand? Cecilia.